Hi guys, welcome back to the Spurred On podcast and we are all surely basking in the glory of the 3-1 victory over Crystal Palace at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on Saturday. I've had another look over the game, kind of, uh, I think it's important actually to watch games back after, whether they're wins or losses, because you get a kind of fairer idea of exactly what happened. I don't know about you guys at home, but certainly when I'm watching Tottenham Hotspur play live in the moment, what I'm saying and what I'm thinking is clouded by my tension and the nerves that I have. Uh, And I can definitely be, you know, slightly more, hmm, what's the right word, Uh, emotional and stressed about my opinions based on how I'm feeling in that moment. So it's good to watch it back after the fact, and then you get a bit more of an idea. So I'm going to go through things that I thought uh, I learned, certainly, uh, having watched it back. But most importantly, just a a huge victory for Spurs. Another come-from-behind win, showing that we have the kind of desire and we have the... I guess mentality to bring ourselves back from the brink because two home losses in a row to Wolves and Crystal Palace, certainly in terms of how the media would have spun it and how Tottenham fans would have felt uh, potentially absolutely disastrous for the rest of our season and maybe even arguably for the way that people are talking about Ange's project, even though the reality of course is that he's so early on in his tenure and he hasn't got the squad that he wants or the full amount of players that he feels Uh, would really benefit the style of play that he is choosing. So in terms of things I felt we learned, firstly, something I don't think I mentioned in my post-match review is just the amount of silly free kicks that we are still giving away. And I'm not just talking about Eze's goal, because obviously that was a a free kick given away by Benton Kerr where he, he kind of had to. He had to give that foul away because Eze had just changed his angle to run a bit more centrally and if Bentico hadn't made that tackle, he would have just, I think, Ezra either had a shot anyway from 19 yards out or laid it off to his right winger. It might have been Ayu, not sure, but who was absolutely free in on goal. So I think Bentico did the right thing. And I'm not just talking about a free kick like that, which they've scored from. I'm talking about free kicks anywhere in our own half, especially in games like that against teams who come and set up with a low block. In those games, set pieces are pretty much the only way that we're going to lose them. And even in the first kind of 15, 20 minutes, we gave away two free kicks in and around our own penalty box out wide. And and we continue to do this all season. And one of the reasons I really think it's something we've got to work on is because we're not good at winning those first balls from those free kicks as well. We set up a very high line by which what we're doing is we're saying to the opposition, okay, if you can play the perfect ball in between the goalkeeper, who's kind of around about five yards out, uh, and our high line, which is around 20 to 22 yards out, then sure, that's a great ball, great delivery. But realistically, in the Premier League, and I see it time and time again in these games, the delivery is good enough to find that. And we have been losing a lot of the first balls in those situations. So it's something I'd really like to see us work on. And like I said, not just because Ezra scored that free kick, but because of the amount of times we're giving away free kicks in our own half that are then delivered into the box in those games against low block teams where really they're they're only going to score from set pieces or in a game against Wolves when they've got real class on the counter-attack. So that was something I wanted to talk about. Before I go on to the next thing I felt I learned, please do press that like button and that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're not listening on the podcast platforms, please do go over to Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcast. Give me a follow and a subscribe. It really helps. And if you want to become a Patreon member or a Spurred On Pro member on YouTube, just check out in the description box only about a pound a month and it really helps me continue to make this daily content. Next up though, I want to talk about Hyung Min Son in the number nine position. I really felt that he offered or gave us something so much different to Richarlison or so very different to what Richarlison has been off. Now, obviously, Rishi has been on a great run of goal scoring, scored uh, at one point, I think, like nine in 10 games. And I was confident he was going to get to 15 league goals. Unfortunately, this little injury he's picked up is is possibly not going to allow that because Sonny has come into the nine. And what I love about Sonny is I feel like his hold-up play is cuter. And that's not necessarily because he's better in terms of holding it up with his back to goal. I think they're probably quite similar with that. But what Sonny does is he makes the angles for the passes from his midfielders or from the defenders into his feet. He makes them cleverer. So he's got a little bit more time away from the defender. It might even be that he's just quicker off the mark and the defender hasn't got as much time to follow him quickly enough. 
And so there were a lot of times uh, in the game against Palace where he was making those cute little runs towards the ball and changing the angle of the play and giving the ball out wide, keeping it, giving it out wide and maintaining the momentum of our attacks in the final third. I was very impressed with that. Also, obviously, he offers a bit more pace in behind. Now, in these deep block games, we're not going to get many chances in behind, but in this game, we did. Werner, obviously, in the first half, unfortunately missed. Uh, I think he had too much time to think about it, really. I think instinctively, like with his goal, he'll always be okay. But when he has a lot of time to think about it, I think, you know, subconsciously, probably, all of that time where he was at Chelsea and he got basically bullied out of his form and told that he wasn't a good finisher anymore comes to the fore. But with Sonny, like with his goal, he offers so much more in behind because he's still, even at the age of 31, coming up to 32, he's still got the pace to get away from those defenders. And then nobody in the entire crowd and anyone watching at uh, home live thought that Sonny was going to miss that. In fact, I really noticed that Pat Matasar and Deke Kulisevsky, who had made runs to kind of try and catch up with Son, they actually gave up their runs. That's how sure they were that Sonny was going to score. So that's another reason why I think Sonny's great in the nine and may well stay in the nine, even when Rishi comes back from injury. Interestingly, um, Ranch Postacogli said he thought Richarlison was going to be out for maybe three, four weeks. But Richarlison has said to Brazilian media that he thinks he might be available for selection against Aston Villa. So let's keep an eye on that one. But it would not surprise me at all if Sonny stays in the nine for that Aston Villa game. And I think I may have mentioned this in my post-match review, the instant match review. Uh... I think we will get in behind a lot against Aston Villa. It's going to be high line against high line, a press off. And uh, I think having potentially Timo Werner, Hung Min Son, and maybe even on the right, Brennan Johnson. Uh, he may well choose to pick ben Brennan Johnson on the right because Aston Villa plays such a high line. And with that pace in behind, we could cause them loads and loads of trouble. Next up, I want to talk a little bit just briefly about Eve Basuma. I thought he had a good game and he had a fair game. But could he be braver on the ball? I really felt like in those first 10 games of the season, Ibasuma was so brave on the ball, not just in coming to get it off the defenders or off the goalkeeper, which he's still doing, but then in terms of his little passes in between the lines, finding little angles and finding little spaces. And I'm just wondering, having watched the game back, could he be a little bit braver? And then I thought some more about it. Maybe more than anyone, Ibasuma is the player missing the duo of Pedro Porro and Destiny Udogi playing at fullbacks. Uh, as those inverted fullbacks at the same time. Obviously, Udogi played on uh, Saturday and he did fine. Uh, I wish he'd get some longer slug, uh, longer studs, sorry, because he slips over so much more than any other player this season. I really noticed that um, Destiny Udogi slips over. But I wonder if Yves Basuma is really missing having Poro and Udogi inverting at the same time in terms of those little options that he was using a lot in those first 10 games. Little five-yard ball to Udogi, get it back. Little five-yard ball to Poro, get it back. And then space arrives for uh, Madison to get in between the lines and push us forward. And maybe if Poro is fit against Aston Villa, which I think we're all hoping he will be, maybe it'll be Yves Basuma who benefits the most from having those players around him. Let me know in the comments what you think, whether I picked up on something there or whether I'm talking at absolute rubbish. Next up, I want to talk about Christian Romero. Obviously, that was a vital goal. He scored the second goal for us to put us 2-1 up. He is also now the joint highest defensive goal scorer in the Premier League this season. Really vital that he is offering us those options. I just wondered whether, you know, he was obviously in that position because we were, uh, at that point, uh, we'd been 1-0 down and then we wanted to go on and win the game. We'd equalised, we wanted to go and win the game. So he had stayed up for an opportunity and but we only had a throw in it wasn't a set piece and I just wonder whether maybe him staying up and getting forward more could be something we see even more obviously it's being talked about a lot with John Stones at Man City the difference with with that with John Stones at Man City is when John Stones goes forward and plays often as far forward as the 10 at the moment um, they still have three players kind of playing narrow in defense uh, so it'll be it's like Diaz at centre half and then Kyle Walker covering and of course Kyle Walker is incredibly quick as well and Nathan Ake maybe on the left with Spurs because of our two inverted fullbacks we would literally be leaving Van der Ven one on one and possibly even at sometimes one on two so it won't be as simple but maybe in more in those games those deep block games like we've seen recently with Brentford with Wolves with Crystal Palace maybe Romero could get forward and stay forward a bit more not only when we're 
pushing for a winner or leading to equalise, but maybe even to add an extra man in there earlier on and see what the opposition do if they'll pull another striker back to try and fill in a, a hole with an extra man. Just something I thought of. Let me know what you think. Next up, did I mentioned him earlier, but I want to talk a bit more about Brennan Johnson. This is definitely his best spell for Tottenham Hotspur, and it's no coincidence that it's while he's been given a rest from the first team. I mention it time after time. He wasn't brought in to straight away play every single first team player. He's too young and too raw for that at the moment. I know, even though we spent 40 odd million pounds, 45 million pounds on him, but that's just the nature of the market. But now that he's had a rest, he's coming off the bench, he's scored twice and he's assisted one. Brilliant. Brilliant tenacity for that assist at the weekend. And uh, he's in his best form for now and really offering a great option from the bench. But as I said, I do think against Aston Villa, it could be a horses for courses. Let's get as quick a front line as we can. Um, I'm not suggesting Kulisevsky's playing badly. I don't think he is. I think he offers important options for us. But I do wonder whether Big Ange will choose to play Johnson from the start against Aston Villa. He really makes those uh, front and back post runs really brilliantly. He had another great chance on the half volley against Crystal Palace, which he couldn't quite manoeuvre his body around to score. But uh, he is doing better than actually any of our players, I'd say, in terms of offering that option at the back post, which Spurs want to score so many goals from I like I said before having watched that open training session at Tottenham Hotspur the other week that was the drill we were working on time after time after time again get that ball to the byline cross it for your far post winger to score at the back post just before I go a couple of very quick things I thought Emerson Royal never stopped running at the weekend got to give him some credit he never stopped pressing never stopped offering options to our players and as a result he was taking Crystal Palace defenders into areas they didn't want to go he's not great on the ball we know that he's six out of ten at best on the ball but in terms of his willingness in terms of his running and his pressing he was absolutely a nine out of ten so fair play to Emerson Royal well done he got a lot of stick against after the Wolves game but he did really well in this one and um, that's pretty much it I had a couple of other points I realized I'd already integrated it into the rest of what I talked about a huge win for Spurs I am confident going into this Aston Villa game. Maybe I shouldn't be. Maybe it's similar to when we went away to Brighton. I was confident going to that one. But this will be an early kickoff with them having played Thursday night against Ajax. And I just, I've got a feeling we could do something at Villa Park. Let's see what happens. But like, as usual, thank you so much for uh, watching or listening. Please do press uh, the like. Please do subscribe. Leave your comments. I'll try and answer as many as I can. And go over to the podcast platforms. Give me a follow and a subscribe there. But most importantly, guys, come on you Spurs.